Today's lesson is going to be on command chaining. With command chaining, you're going to be able to pretty much run different commands in like a sequence. You'll also be able to do like similar to if statements where you can run one command and based off of the result, have another command run. So first let's talk a little bit about how you can run different commands in a sequence. I have a terminal open and let's just start by listing out the concept of the directory. So we have our install log. Let's say that I want to run the run the cat command utility on the install log file. So I just type cat space install log. Now this would allow me to actually view the contents of that file. Now let's say I wanted to also, after I see the contents of this file, see the contents of the install.log.syslog file. So I would just do semicolon space cat install log dot syslog. And then I would just press enter. And you'll see now that I see content for both files. So what this did is it first ran the first command and then the second command without regards to any status, exit status of the first command. So now let's base now let's base it off of the exit status of the first command. Now if the first command is successful, so let's do cat install log. Right? So we use cat install log. And now let's say that's successful. We want it to then run the second command. So we would do space ampersand ampersand and let's say I wanted it to list the contents of the directory after if it worked. You'll notice that it worked, it was able to read the file so first you would see it read the file and then after it read the file it would list the contents of the directory. Now another way you can handle this is if the first command fails, you can have the second command kick in. So let's say let's say we did cat random letters and then we just did the pipe symbol twice ls l. So since the first one failed, it wasn't able to read the contents of that file. It then gave me the the list of the directory. So let's go ahead and try now cat install log pipe pipe ls l. So you'll see since the first command was successful, we did not list the contents of the directory using the ls command. Now there's also a lot of different ways to view file, the contents of files without cat. Let's talk a little bit about some of the paginators, such as more and less. So you'll see if I just type more install log, you'll see that it allows me to actually page through using the space bar, page through the different con like instead of having to use the scroll bar, I could actually just page through using the space bar and it'll tell me at what percent I'm actually in the within that file. Let's press Q to escape. And let's try the less command on the same file, install log. You'll see we have the same type paging setup, starts from the top. And we're able to actually use the arrow keys to scroll up and down, as well as the space bar. Let's go ahead and press Q to quit. Another command that you could use to actually output like a sequence of numbers is the seq command. Now providing a number to this command such as let's say 10 would actually output a sequence of numbers from 1 to 10 as you see. So let's go ahead and use that to write it to a file. So let's just do sequence of uh, let's say 500 and we're going to redirect the output of that to a 500.txt file. So now, if I do less on the 500.txt file, you'll see that I'm able to scroll through all the numbers within that file. Now, if I wanted to see the first few lines of a file, 
I would just type the command head. Head, followed by the file I wanted to check. And you'll see that this actually showed me the first 10 lines of the file. Let's say I wanted to see the last 10 lines. I would just do tail 500.txt. And you'll see that I have the last 10 lines of the file. Another, another utility we can use is the WC, word count utility, which would actually show us how many lines that we have in a file, or the count of words. So let's just do WC to the file name, and you'll see that we have 500 words, 500 lines, as well as how many characters, and what the file name is. You can read more about the WC utility by just doing man WC. And you'll see that it tells you, prints the number of the lines, words, and bytes in the files. Another utility that you should be familiar with is the file utility, which would determine the type of file that you have. So let's type file on this 500.txt and you'll see it's a ASCII text file. Now let's go ahead and just try on let's list our contents and let's go to a directory CD we'll go to opt CD vbox editions let's go into our bin directory vbox Client Oops. Sorry about that. So now we have these three files. Let's go ahead and do file on VBox client. And you'll see that it tells us that that file is an executable 32 bit for what type of Intel processor as well as the Linux version. Another very useful utility that everybody should be very familiar with is how to switch utility, switch user. So the way you would switch from user to user is using the SU utility. Right now I only have one user on this, on this uh, machine so I'm not able to actually switch to another user. So, but I'll go more about uh, creating users and switching users in a different video.